and action. Good morning. How is everybody? Welcome to your Tuesday morning meeting. I'm your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and welcome. If you're new to my world, I am an award-winning psychologist and author. I'm also an executive coach for women leaders in tech, healthcare, and and I'm going to just share here tech, healthcare, and other high-performance fields, including entrepreneurship. And I am happy to be here with you this morning. If you are with me live, say hi in the comments and let me know. And if you're listening to the recording, say hi, so I can come in back in and say hi back to you. A couple of announcements before we get started with our topic today. As always, um, there are always people who listen to the Tuesday morning meeting or to the sister podcast, Mindset Rx, and want to find a way to connect with me or to work with me even on specific things that are going on in their lives, in their, in their leadership and whatever's going on in terms of burnout, glass ceilings, anything that affects women who lead at work. Um, if that's something that you're curious about, you can always book a call with me. Just go to my website, drrobinmckay.com forward slash call. And you'll be able to get access to my calendar. There is a questionnaire that we ask you to complete before your meeting because I need to be able to prepare to meet with you and to make sure that I, it's something I can help with. So it's nice to meet you too, for those of you who are on the, the live session today. And today we're talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. It's something I've been interested in and studying, focusing on, mentoring on for, oh gosh, at least 10 years or so. It's the psychology of women making money. And I was reflecting as I was walking my golden doodle puppy Cooper this morning, I was reflecting about, it's hard to believe that it's been around 10 years since I started the conversation around the psychology of women making money. And I remember back then the US, the sorry, the World Bank came out with statistics that basically indicated that women make up about 50%, roughly 50% of the workforce, but only possess about 1% of the wealth globally. Now, I'm sure that those statistics have changed a little bit, but it's only been 10 years. And I know from the many, many women who I've mentored co and coached over the years that money continues to be a sore spot sometimes, a at least a point of concern or worry. And not necessarily in the way that you think, though, of course, the women who work with me um, have access to money and wealth because of their leadership positions. And we do that so that we can support people who are also at a different level of, of wealth. But the ones who work with me directly, who invest in themselves directly, do have access to it. And yet, and yet, they also worry about fulfilling their financial potential. They also worry about having conversations around money, about making decisions about money sometimes and so on. And so I think that it's a timely and relevant issue, especially in light of last week's session where I talked about the psychology of, of salary negotiations, raises and promotions, which is along the same lines as the psychology of women making money. In fact, I would say that this conversation today will extend it, but it also kind of raises it up a level to, we'll say the meta level, so we can kind of look at it from a bird's eye view and see what's going on up there. I like to work on the individual level because, you know, quite frankly, the societal and cultural shifts that need to be made, I really believe, um, well, I'll just say this. I just feel like that we have more control over ourselves and over our own perspectives than we do about anything externally. The more we change our own perspectives around things like making money, getting paid your worth, that kind of thing, the easier the shifts are externally. And you start to see the ripple effect of one person's decision to change their relationship alliance with money, which, by the way, touches every aspect of our lives every single day. And I know that for talented, high achieving, accomplished women, there's kind of this hesitancy to even bring up the money conversation because we have already been given so much. And is it even right for me to want more? 
is it even right for me to want more? And maybe if I want more, it takes away from somebody else's ability, capacity to earn more money. And so those are the kind of the things that I've seen in the last 10 or so years that I've been talking about the psychology of women making money. And as you can imagine, it is a multifaceted issue. And the perspective I'm going to offer you today is just my perspective. If you talk to an economist, if you talk to another uh, person who's in psychology, if you talk to another leader, they're going to have a different perspective on this. So this is my perspective. It's based on the fact that I've worked with intuitive, intelligent, emotionally intelligent women leaders for years and years. And these are some of the things that I've seen come up around the psych their own psychology of making money. So a couple of things. I'm going to introduce a new term to you. It may be new to you. Um, it's called wealth consciousness. And wealth consciousness is just the capacity to receive and to hold more financial wealth. So it's not how much money is in your bank account. It's not how much you're making in your salary. It's not how much your business is bringing in every year. It's how you as a human being have expanded yourself enough, your psychology, your mindset to receive and hold more wealth. So if, for example, you have only the wealth consciousness enough to hold a thimble full and you're wanting to hold a swimming pool full or an ocean full of money, I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, uh, we've got some work to do around stretching yourself, expanding yourself into the person, the, the version of yourself who actually can hold and receive that much. But you can imagine if you've got the wealth consciousness of a thimble, the amount of overflow that you might re be receiving can be really uncomfortable. And first of all, and secondly, you can't receive very much to begin with. Now, why would somebody have the wealth consciousness of a thimble where there are a lot of reasons for that? A couple that I see have to do with familial stories, generational stories, and even traumas around money that have been passed down from generation to generation. So as an example, in my own family history, my great grandparents were immigrants from, from Norway and they came across America to settle in the Dakotas to be farmers. Everybody worked, everybody struggled, everybody lived on the farm. My great grandparents had lots of children in order to help them work on the farm and they didn't have very much money. And so I was raised by people who were hardworking, who put a lot of effort into into their work in order to make just a little bit of money. My grandfather on my mother's side literally worked in a gold mine. So he'd go to work every single day. Early in his life, he, he became something else later, but early in his life, he was a gold miner. But that didn't mean he got to keep the gold, did it? He worked for the company that got to keep the gold. So again, he was, in that case, he was close to wealth but it wasn't his. So he would come home with very little, which then impacted, of course, my mom's generation, my, my aunts and uncles and my mother in terms of their relationship with money. So I'm sharing this with you because we all have money stories. We all have generational and familial influences when it comes to our relationship with money. And these generational and familial influences really do affect our own relationship, our own willingness to expand our wealth consciousness, ability to expand our wealth consciousness in order to hold more money. So I want to stop there for a second. If you're here with me live and if you've got a question, leave it in the comments so I can answer that or any ahas that are coming through. If you're watching the recording, do the same thing so I can come back in and, and comment. So when it comes to the psychology of making money, we talked about wealth consciousness, but we also have to talk about a couple of other things. Wealth consciousness definitely affects your ability to ask for raises and promotions, but so too does your sense of self. 
and how you're feeling. So we have to look now at your sense of self-confidence, your sense of competence, and your worthiness and deservedness. And these are two concepts that I talked about in last week's Tuesday morning meeting on the psychology of salary negotiations, raises, and promotions. And somebody asked in the comments, well, what's the difference between worthiness and deservedness? So I wanna bring that forward too, because this is part of the conversation. Worthiness is, am I worth it? Am I good enough? Am I good enough to receive more money? Am I good enough to receive a promotion or a raise or a surprise bonus? Am I good enough? So that's worthiness. Most of the women who I work with who are very accomplished, they're educated, they've got lots of credentials, they've won awards for their work. Most of them, I think, would say, yes, I'm, I'm good enough for sure. I, I graduated first in my class. I'm good enough. I've won, I've been recognized and had awards for the work that I've done. I'm good enough. But where we struggle, I think collectively, is on this deservedness piece. And this has to do with our relationship with work because deservedness asks, answers the question, have I done enough? Have I sacrificed enough? Have I put in enough blood, sweat, and tears in order to receive? in order to justify my deservingness of a raise, a promotion, a surprise bonus, a windfall that comes from out of nowhere. And if your deservedness level is low or your deservedness, I'll call it a set point, is low, then you're going to be in a mismatch, an energetic mismatch with the money that you're wanting to receive. I want to bring in, bring forward a comment from one of our live viewers. One of our live viewers says her great grandmother was a teacher and all the women in her family have been professionals. So it wasn't about education, was it? But they were never allowed to make more than the men. They were never allowed to make more than the men. So I know this person personally, and I know that she's broken that, that, what do we want to call that generational trauma around not being allowed to make more than the men in your life. And you would be surprised at even now today in 2022, how often that's going to be still happening unconsciously. It's not something, the wealth consciousness piece is not something that's necessarily front and center or even conscious to us. Most of the time it's running as a program behind the scenes. You're not even aware of it unless and until you listen to somebody like me talking about wealth consciousness and you're like, oh my gosh, like I need to look at that as a piece of the puzzle that's going to support me in fulfilling my financial potential rather than always falling short of it. So we have to look at worthiness and deservedness. And when you look at worthiness and deservedness, oftentimes you're going to find kind of a, a mismatch or something incongruent there, some kind of interference, especially around deservedness. Where does that come from? Well, we can even look at, let's just say, cultural or societal influences with deservedness, where somebody outside of yourself is watching you punch your time clock, where somebody, somebody a boss, is judging what you're doing. Are you productive? How many widgets did you make this hour? Did you make enough widgets? Did you, did you clean enough? Did you do enough of the task that you, were, that you had been assigned to do in order to deserve the money that somebody else is going to give you as a result of your effort? So deservedness in some ways is very much tied to um, subjective effort. Subjective effort. So it comes from outside of you. A lot of times though, we'll internalize that. So we don't need somebody outside of us saying that we haven't done enough. It's internalized now. So now we're telling ourselves, I haven't done enough to justify this. And if I get a raise, a promotion, a surprise bonus or any other kind of salary bump or, or windfall of, of money, what we'll tell ourselves is I didn't really deserve it. I feel bad because I didn't work hard enough. I feel bad because I didn't deserve this. So you can imagine what that does to your 
not just your psychology around making money, but your actual bank account. Because if you're sitting there thinking that you don't deserve the money that's sitting in your account, I mean, barring that you've stolen it, right? Or embezzled it or something like that, in which case it's just not yours flat out. But think about like legit getting a raise, a promotion, something like that, looking at your bank account, thinking that you don't deserve it. And then creating the conditions for you to either move that money out and treat it like a hot potato as fast as possible or sock it away, ignore it and pretend like it's not there. You know, under the under the guise of I'm going to save it for a rainy day, but really I'm quite embarrassed to have this money in my account. And these are just a few of the issues that come up when I start talking about women making money and talking to the women who come to me to basically have their relationship with money reset along with their relationship with work and relationship with time, because those three are really entangled. Um, there are a lot of stories like that that come forward that we have to look at. Stories of first-generation Americans whose families were immigrants, most recently, you know, 30 years ago, coming to America with $100 in their pocket or something like that and building their lives from the ground up. And the stories that uh, this, this, these first-generation American people say and tell about their own history with money. So there's a lot of work to be done there. And, you know, this conversation could go on and on, right? So we're not going to go on and on today. But I will say this, that because there is so much work to do, and this is an invitation to you to go deeper with me personally and privately around your own psychology of making money. Because here's the thing. The science of positive psychology is really clear that the better you feel, the more successful you're going to be. Now, what does that mean? It means that there's a there's a causal and bidirectional link between the sense of well-being or happiness and outward success in a number of different fa facets like work, like raises, promotions, even relationships. But if you're not feeling your best, you get on this downward spiral and you might end up hitting glass ceilings, you might end up feeling thwarted in your work. And certainly you're not going to set yourself up to fulfill your financial potential unless and until you're really willing to do this deeper work around changing the story that you have about receiving money, around holding money, around making money, spending money. Unless you change the relationship with money itself, not a whole lot in your experience outward is going to shift. And definitely not a whole lot in your inner world is going to shift either. And that's why I'm here. Um, for those of you who are thinking about wanting to go deeper with me or would like to have a private conversation about how you can, remember, you can always book a call with me, drrobinmckay.com forward slash call to do that. And I've opened up 10, 10 programs for 10 people. And these are wealth consciousness mini coaching packages. So there's three coaching sessions that we do where I actually go in and do um, energetic surgery, basically. And we really clear out some of the some of the psychology that's been stuck in and lodged in your system that's creating these stories for you, just so that you have a clear palette. And you can make decisions for yourself around the kind of relationship that you want to have with money that you want to have with your finances. And even that you want to have with work and time as well, since those two are intertwined. So if that's something that is resonating for you and you'd like to find out more about that, again, book a call with me and we'll have a conversation about best fit for you in terms of what that package would look like. All right. So that's all I have for you today. If this was helpful, I'd love it if you would do a couple of things. One, leave a comment and tell me number one thing that you're taking away. Your comments help me do my work even better. So thank you for those comments. If this was helpful and you feel like somebody else in your network would benefit from hearing this message, please share this, share this with them. Tag me in your post so I can see what you've written and say thank you. And let's spread this message like wildfire. 
like wild, I was going to say like wildflowers, wildflower petals, I guess, like wildfire across the world that yes, we do have a lot of work to do around our psychology of making money. And yet there are some solutions and it starts with you and it starts with me. And I will look forward to hearing from you and I will see you on the next Tuesday morning meeting.